know, being productive, efficient, and effective. So long story short is that we want to be as effective as dancers as possible, which means that we get as much impact at a, every one of our steps as we possibly can, and then as effective as uh, as efficient as possible means to exert as little energy as possible into those steps. And in that way, we are being very just powerful dancers. We're being very influential dancers to our partners as well as just giving ourselves more foundation to work off of. So really quick, what we did was we focused on how our frame, our posture, our stance is our framework, our, it's our entire foundation, but then how we move through space and things, how we place our weight, these are very important. So what we were talking about was keeping the weight on the inside edge of the foot because it favors our axis. Once your weight goes to the outside of your foot, you're starting to fall out because you're no longer centered. So that's why we keep our weight on the center of the foot. We also wanna keep the weight more towards the ball of the foot for the same reason, which is we can keep our axis a little bit more forward. Our center of, center of gravity is a little bit more contained here. If our weight is on our heel, again, same thing with the edge of our foot. We're just kind of falling out of axis. So these are very important tools. And remember, we never get away with a bad step in tango. You're either making up for it with the next steps or you're gonna have to collect and start all over again. So the key is to make every one of your steps count in such a way that your every step that comes after it will be nice and ready to go. So the way that we did this, we just did two steps to, to demonstrate this, but it'll carry on into every other step that you do as long as you maintain these principles. So when you're here, and we place our weight to our right foot. We just did a salida side step here. And when I arrive, notice the flexion in the knee. I arrive completely based on this and I'm ready to take a forward step. And then I arrive based. That was all that we did, just two steps, but you can translate this into more steps as you would like, but we didn't have time. Here, side, boom, arrive, forward. So every one of my steps after that will be nice and contained. For the follower, it was the same thing, except we did it with the left foot, side, and we just extend back here. So the key thing for the followers, again, is not to step back, not to step back, but rather to extend back. Why? It's because the, the leader will follow up with the step, but we need to wait for that lead. So we extend until we receive that lead, okay? Then, this is the principle of being effective, then along with that, what we did was we talked about this with ochos. So we did it with back ochos first. And the key here for the followers to be effective is if we're in an open embrace, you want to use your eyes, but maintain some vision of your leader, whether or not you're looking at his shoulders or chest or slightly off with the peripheral. The thing is, is that you need to have a heading and your leader is that heading. So you always want to maintain your leader somewhere in eyesight so that you can glance because there's a lot of information that's being relayed from my chest as a leader. And it's wasted if you're looking over here, looking over there, anywhere that's not me. It's just you want to be aware of what I'm doing. So here, back ochos, just by watching my chest, she can see the subtle rotations and she can turn that into movement. And it helps her also better embody those movements so that she can feel a lot more clearly what I'm doing with the assistance of her eyes. We don't want to rely on them. They're a powerful tool, but they can also be a powerful tool in the wrong direction too if you're not using them properly. Lastly was the forward ocho. Same idea, maintain the, the vision of the body for the followers. Forward ocho, and we'll maintain. And here we talked about how I block her so that she never feels the impulse to go around me, because if I want her to go around me, I want that to be clear too, to go into a monete. I create the space for her to pass. Leaders, as I'm doing the forward ocho too, I always wanna maintain my follower somewhere in my peripheral as well, usually just off her shoulder, because that's giving me a lot of information too to see relative where she is in her step. Has she completed her rotation? Is she ready to go into the forward step? Where is she in this position? So these are things that I wanna focus on too. 
and like I said, it's like a, picking a lock. I just wait until I feel that click, and then I go, but not before. So I need to watch and be patient and see where she is, and then when she's ready, I don't take her for the step, I accompany her through the step. I take the step that she's going to take. Here, here, here. I feel her go, and then as she's going, I match her, and I go with whatever she's giving me. And then that's going to create a really nice balance and harmony in our connection. So those are the main things that we covered. Thank you. Done, thank you.